marketing mistakes and three big ones we made in our journey to help restaurants just like yours. Today is Saturday story time. Let's talk about three monumental screw ups that we've had over the past 10 years. My goal is to help, to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 389. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we're brought to you by America's Best Restaurants. America's Best Restaurants is on a path to help you independent restaurant owners find more frequent customers. But today, it's Saturday, it's story time. I'm talking about three mistakes me and my team made on this long journey we've had at creating hundreds of thousands of marketing campaigns. You can laugh with us, you can laugh at us, but hopefully you can learn from us too. First, a little disclaimer. This is by no means me giving my team crap or picking on them or pointing out their flaws they've had in the past. This is just having a little fun with three mistakes that are top of mind that I think you'll have a laugh at and you can probably relate to and hopefully learn from. One of these is me. The other two are my team. And when you take massive action, mistakes happen. We have built I can't even tell you how many hundreds of thousands of restaurant marketing campaigns, probably into a million plus, if not close. So you're bound to have mistakes. And the fact that I had only three that came up that were really crazy is pretty damn good. But let's go ahead and get started. So the first one, I'm going to pick on myself. This was an interesting mistake I made by hitting a digit instead of for a week for a day. So we had a client that was opening a new restaurant. This goes back to around 2014-ish. Opened a brand new restaurant and wanted to do some now hiring ads. Now this is back before some of the headaches that Facebook put in place with now hiring when it comes to advertising. And so I was actually pretty new with now hiring. We were typically just doing acquisition. And so this was one of our first now hiring ads. So I handled it personally. I went in there. I built it. I went on my way. The ad budget was $350 for a week over four weeks to get a certain number of applications. And again, we had no clue what level of applications it would drive because it was a brand new idea for us. Well, about 10 days in, now I will say this, good thing this client had a really big budget for marketing in general or this might have been more of a shit show. And also, good thing it worked. About 10 days into the marketing, you know, we had a lot of other things going on. And I happened to visit the store, and the guy's like, dude, whatever you're doing on the now hiring, holy crap. We have been bombarded. We have had way more people than we ever thought would ever apply. We have already staffed up this restaurant. This is a big restaurant. I was like, oh, seriously? He's like, yeah, I don't know what you did, man. But the fact that you got those results for the 350 a week budget and we're not even two weeks in is absolutely insane. And I'm like, well, apparently I must be good at something I didn't know I was good at. So I log into Facebook and I go, oh, shit. I think I just figured out why the results are so good. What? I had the budget at 350 a day. When I say 350, I mean 350. So I moved a little fast. I didn't have weekly budget. I had daily budget. And we had spent in 10 days $3,500 instead of about $500 to $700. Now, the good news was the client was blown away. And I said, hey, <laughs> I got this. I'll cover the mistake. I'll pay the, you know, the couple thousand dollars that was messed up. And he's like, no, we're good because number one, we've actually fixed a major problem we had in this. And you know what? That's what it took right there. And we're there, so we don't need to market anymore. And it worked. But I would have coughed up the money because I've done that before, as you'll hear here in a minute. The next one was one of my team. And this was where we were moving a little fast and we probably didn't do enough research. So we had a client of ours that was in Bowling Green, Ohio. And good thing was we caught this really quick. But we had this rapid-fired pizza in Bowling Green, Ohio. 
and we had turned on some ads. And apparently we chose Bowling Green, Kentucky as the city for the ads to debut in. <laughs> well, the ads went live and our stuff goes pretty solid. We have pretty good KPIs. We know what's going to happen when we turn an ad on for how much. If we're spending 10 bucks a day, we know how many comments, clicks, likes. We understand what it's going to happen, what's going to happen with it. So there's going to be comments right away. Well, the first couple comments, people are asking, where is this at in Bowling Green? So I happen to see it. I'm commenting. It's right here. People are like, where is that? And so I started to get curious about how people don't know where the hell the streets are in their city. I'm like, what are these people, morons? And so I'm replying to multiple comments, and it's within 24 hours. It's probably 10, 15 people having conversations with, and nobody can figure out where I'm talking about. I can't figure out why they can't figure it out. And so it occurs to me, shit, these people are in Bowling Green, Kentucky, because I start clicking through their profiles. <laughs> so I go to the ads and realize that we had the wrong city in the wrong state. Mistake number three could have been really, really, really expensive. And it ended up costing my company about three grand. So this restaurant client of ours, now here's the one thing I'll say about this. This had two parties at fault. Two people didn't pay attention. So one of our clients goes live with a acquisition campaign tied to a contest. But the contest, it was, you know, comment on this post for a chance to win a party at the restaurant. It's like, it's a niche one-off restaurant. It's not somewhere you go every week. It's somewhere you go once or twice a year. Won't say the brand, but you've probably heard of it. So we run this advertising campaign and when people would comment, they would be entered to win the comp contest. And then in messenger, we would give them a promo. Well, the promo was supposed to be a, what was it? It was a discount off of a gift card. It was like, spend this much, get a $100 gift card. And so, of course, when we launch campaigns, I engage in them. I engage in the campaign on Facebook. It goes to Messenger. It pops up and says, Matt, click below to claim your free $100 gift card. And I'm thinking, okay, this is part of the contest. So I click claim and it pops up. Bring this in for your $100 gift card. I'm like, oh, did I, did I win? Like, look at this. I win something. So I start looking through it, and I call my team, and I realize that no, the client and our team both created something that was incorrect. It was supposed to be—I can't remember what the exact promotion was going to be—but it was something like spend this much money and get a one hundred dollar gift card. So it might have been spend a hundred dollars, get a hundred dollar gift card because this place was not an inexpensive restaurant. But it wasn't. And here's the bad part was I went to Workplace, which is where we have all client communication and we get all approvals. And I see the proof is posted there by somebody on my team saying, here is the here's the graphics package for this promotion. Here's the messaging. And then here's the recording of the automation. And I see the client that says, this looks awesome. This is approved. So I look at it again and I'm like, what? Something's wrong. What am I missing here? So I call my team and said, hey, what is this promotion supposed to be? And they tell me, and I'm like, did you read what the hell it says? And they look and they're like, oh, something's wrong there. So I call the client. I'm like, hey, what is, the, what is your understanding of the promotion you approved? And he gives it to me. And it sure as hell wasn't a free gift card. I said, well, we got a problem. We've got about 100 people. No, it was, uh, let's see, what was it? Yeah, it was 100 people. It was like 10 grand. We've got like 100 people. If that's right, 10 grand. Be 10, yeah, 100 people that have claimed this $100 free gift card. And he's like, oh, shit, I see it now. And like, he realized, he's like, how did I approve that? I just, I misread it, I guess. I'm like, apparently, and apparently my team created a terrible promotion. Great for a consumer, terrible for the restaurant. I said, we already got it yanked down. I figured it was wrong. We yanked it down. We've contained it. We know that there's this many customers that have it. And I said, I'm going to go ahead and proactively offer something up because you're going to get hit with these. These $100 gift cards are going to come in. And I want to say the number, it was like $3,500 was the number because I believe we came up with the conclusion that there was going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of ten dollars to $20,000 in gift cards redeemed. There ended up being right around ten grand in gift cards redeemed. And I said, here's my, here's my offer before we even get one redeemed. 
We're at fault because we created it. You're at fault because you approved it. That's why we do this thing. So you catch our mistake. If we have it, we shouldn't have had this big a mistake. You shouldn't have approved this big a mistake. And he's like, I agree with you completely, Matt. Both of us are idiots. I'm like, there we go. So I say, here's my thought. Let's split it. Whatever gets redeemed, whatever you think's fair. And he goes, well, I think's fair is we'll take the food cost off because they'll come in, they'll use it. So if they spend a hundred bucks, it's actually going to cost me 30, but we'll go ahead and just come up with the math. And the math came out to where like there was some neighborhood of $10,000 were claimed. It was like six, six or $7,000 in his cost with everything. And we wrote a check for like $3,000 and he ate $3,000. So mistakes happen. And it's good to have a partner like we did with this restaurant owner that understood that, Hey, he was at fault as much as us. So reason I did Saturday story time this way today, because I started kind of thinking about the one where I overspent on the HR one for that brand that I was cracking up like, man, that could have been expensive. And no wonder we got such good results. And then I thought about the Bowling Green one and then the gift card one. And I thought, have a little laugh at our expense, but also maybe get some clarity on proof checking stuff you're doing and having your stuff together. That's all I got. Enjoy your Saturday. I'll see you next episode. So as you know, I don't charge for my content. We don't have sponsors. We don't have product placement in here. But what I want your help with is spreading the word. If you're finding value here, do me a favor. Share this on your social media. Share an episode with something that made sense to you, that's relevant to your restaurant, that you got value from, and tag Matt Plapp and America's Best Restaurants. Also, go to America's Best Restaurants on Facebook and on Google and leave us a review. Let us know the impact we've had on your restaurant with our roadshow, with our marketing help, or with our podcast. And last but not least, if you want to take the next step and help me out a lot and help us out a lot, text me a testimonial, 859-743-2408. That's my cell. A selfie video would be awesome about the impact this content or our company is having on your independent restaurant. But worst case scenario, just a few kind words. The way we can help lift this industry up is to help get content like this to more independent restaurant owners, and you are the key to spreading the word. I appreciate your support. Have an amazing day.